Boots on the ground. First of all, I believe this is our responsibility. We do. I'm the father of Oscar Grant. The third. He was brutally killed at Fruit Bell Bar Station. So far. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I guess I had the honor of meeting this brother. Good to meet him again. What's good, man? Project Pop. We out Chip here. Fred was subsequently assassinated. When we first touched down, we, we, we got this thing. We look at, look, look, look at family pictures. Like, man, you know, you know we related. <laughs> Taco Tone, checking in. Positive pull-up day with CRC. Yeah. We'll make it all worth it, man. Yeah. And I also got a book coming out. It's gonna be released. Along with probably be a documentary right behind it. Yes, sir. I'm all the same, bro. Another event, another positive pull-up. Bicycles, earbuds, water, and food. Most definitely food, because I'm sure we'll go eat. Right, we're over here on 30th and Wood Street with Anti-Police Terror Project. With lunch and our friends from the Wood Street Commons. CRC Kano. Boots on got. the ground. We all we got. Hey. First of all, I believe this is our responsibility. We say even when it ain't your fault, it is your responsibility because ain't nobody gonna do it but us. So our whole our whole ethic, everything we do as an organization is about self-determination. Period point blank. How we do it for ourselves. And, and, and any other factors that come into play, we want them to do it under, as the Black Panther Party said, community control. Right, okay, okay. So a lot of people refer to CRC kind of as a, a new age version of the Black Panther Party. What's your reaction? Definitely inspired by it. I'm, I'm, I'm also a central committee member of the Black Panther Party Cubs with Chairman Fred Hampton Jr. And for us, our whole organizational ethos is based on Minister Huey P. Newton's philosophy that power is the ability to define phenomenon and make it act in a desired manner, right? We say power is the ability to define phenomenon and make it act in a desired manner. And everything that we do is about that, right? We say whatever power is being expressed, we better be able to express power. That's our philosophy. And so that's going to look a bunch of different ways in a lot of different places, right? Our thing is we, socialists call it dialectical materialism. I mean, studying the conditions and, 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 and shaping your actions accordingly. We call it facilitating or finding the flux. Whatever the changing conditions are, we have to assess them and then we have to adjust to them. Because a lot of times what our folks do is we have abstract ideology. We say revolution, we say this, we say that, we say a simulation. We have a strategy of change that's about studying the conditions and then moving accordingly to get a particular outcome. But the outcome has to be having the ability to define the phenomenon and make it act in the desired manner. So by define the phenomenon, what's the phenomenon? Well, phenomenon is everything around us, right? So here, people might say that this is a capitalist society, a predatory capitalist society. The phenomenon has been defined, it's been observed, right? But also defining the phenomenon that says, we want to resolve the power differential. How do we get some power for ourselves? How do we get some power to create the outcomes that are best for us, right? So that's what we're talking about with the phenomena. We want to figure out what, how we have to organize ourselves to be able to create good outcomes. And this, what we're doing right now is a part of that. We're developing a relationship with the community. A lot of times when you hear from different folks in the city and different places, they say, man, when we come out here, folks be doing this and they be doing that. But that hasn't been our experience. Our experience is a house, this community gets in there and helps us out. Cleaning up with us. If you look around right now, brothers and sisters that's living out here got rooms, right? They clean it up, right? Because we approach with respect and resources. And we don't have nearly as much resources as other organizations, right? But we come with what we got. And so we negotiate, we say, man, can even when we didn't help, we didn't help, we didn't help get a whole encampment's house, right? When the city was having issues with it, we didn't come to Fitzgerald Park, right? That was APTP, MH First, Community Ready Corps, uh, 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 was Love and Justice with Talia and all. all don't, that's who came in to help get Fitzgerald Park finished. They won't tell you that, right? Folks, it was like about nine folks who were unwilling to go. We helped get hotels, all of that, because we came with compassion. And we said, 
What does it take? What do you need? When you approach our communities with disrespect, it creates a pushback. So you got to know how to move in our community. And so this is what it's about. We come with service first. Right, right. What's up with you, man? What's up? Yeah. God bless you. Uh, okay, so, uh, man, I got a question. A lot of people kind of know, a lot of people don't know outside of our area. Who is Cap Brooks? Let me ask. It's the co-founder, uh, myself and Cap Brooks co-founded the Anti-Police Terror Project, right? You're a co-founder of that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Does that surprise a lot of people or you feel like everybody knew? A lot of people know. A lot of people know. Uh, you know, Cat, Cats want to, Cat will tell you. That I'm, I'm, I'm one of her mentors, right? And so, you know, but I'm in a lot of places, right. <laughs> a lot of places. Oh so, yeah. Wow, I had no idea yeah. that you was yeah. uh, co-founder of the Anti-Police Terror Project. That's what's up. Can yeah. you tell us about the mission of the Anti-Police Terror Project? Well, you know, when we started out, it was folks that were. It, it grew out of Oscar Grant, right? So the Community Ready Corps. Both of those organizations grew out of the Oscar Grant when Oscar Grant was murdered, right? I personally and, and some of the folks I've been organizing with, we've been on the ground in Oakland for 30 plus years, right? But when Oscar Grant was murdered, it kind of changed how we organized. Clean up, get this community back like it was. Everybody see how you out there. Man, see how it looks. That's why it's supposed to look. And have fun. This is the second time we stop all these gunplay. Yeah. That's what we don't need no more. Right on, right on. I was part of that solution, that problem. Yeah. Now I'm part of that solution. Oh, respect. I'm trying to tell you now today. You think running up on the stove? You think snatching people's stuff up out the car? You think doing all that? It's cool, guess what? I ain't gonna tell you don't do it. I'm gonna tell you what the consequences is. Guess what the consequences is? Uh, we going to the penitentiary. If you don't go there, somebody gonna hunt you down and get you because you done robbed their mama, their sister, or their wife. So, youngsters, and not just youngsters. OG, y'all get y'all butt up off y'all ass and start talking to these youngsters, bro. Give these youngsters some knowledge. You don't gotta give them no game, give them some knowledge to show these youngsters, bro, that what they doing ain't right. If you show them, they will also get positive and want to be on a positive level. And they will want to work. Because I'm working with youngsters right now. We cleaning up the streets of Oakland. West Oakland, the East Oakland, so to right. North Oakland. So you right. We right now in 65th Village. We're passing out food, TV, and bikes for the kids. We doing a rap. Y'all come on down here and get to this rap. Easy, boy. Easy. Trust and believe. Yes, indeed. I'm the father of Oscar Grant, yes, the third. He was brutally killed at Fruitvale Bar Station. That's right. So for all you people who didn't know, now you know. Guess what? He's back. <laughs> for your ball, for your ball. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yep. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I got I had the honor of meeting this brother. Good to meet him again. Respect, brother. Yes, sir. Right on, brother. Got a great thing to do. What's good, man? Project Papa, we out here, man. Tell us where we at, man. Okay, okay. Uh, what's good, man? <laughs> what we doing, man? What we doing? What's going on? This is a giveaway? Yeah, uh, we got a giveaway going on here. Clean up the community for RCRC. I'm cleaning up everything. Got four kids and clean up. I'm showing them we keep your community clean. Right. Going that Got some bikes giving away. TV, and then we got Taco Tone out here giving away free tacos and shit for the community. That's what's up. So this ain't the first time you did this. You did this before. Nah, we, this is the first time we did the cleanup. 
Yeah. Okay. We did. We didn't did other events like turkey giveaway, Christmas giveaway. We are doing a few things, but it's the first one, a clean up one. First right. One. Okay. That's what's up. That's what's up, man. What's your uh? What differentiates you, man, and your movement from uh the norm, normal rapper? Uh, I mean, people be just, they just be a rapper for the good. They don't even do nothing for the community. You, I mean, you got some people that do. The majority rule, the majority of the people don't. So, right. You know, I mess with the kids around here, you feel me? Even like the older people, like older women, older men, if they need help, you know, I help them out, whatever. I don't even look at myself as a rapper. I'm just, I'm just me, really, truthfully. That's, that's what separates me from a rapper. Rappers don't need to be rappers. I'm me. At the end of the day, I'm going to be me whether I'm rapping or not. Right, yeah. right, okay. Um, what was I about to say? What you got coming up? Well, actually, before what you got coming up, man, how long you been doing this music stuff? Uh, like, serious, serious hype, like 2014, but I've been rapping like first grade. Damn. With some older people from up over here, they used to write the rap for me and rap. Okay. Sorry about it. Some serious, like, writing Project Papa 2014. That's when you started paying for studio time. Uh, I said that's when you started paying for studio yeah, yeah, time. Yeah, 2014. Yeah. Okay, okay. 2013. I think my first my first video was January 2014. Okay. Yeah. Yep. I feel you. So, um, man, what you got coming up, man? What can the people expect? Got more videos coming out. I got another tape voicemail too coming out uh, in the May. For June. Okay. Clothes for my clothing brand, you know. Right. They gotta just stay tuned with me. You just never know. I be coming up with so much stuff. Brand, you never know what's going on. Right, right. Yeah. All right. Who are some of your inspirations? Uh, be musical or non-musical. Uh, I ain't really got no musical inspiration. I don't really got none off the top of the head like that. Really, I don't want whoever really doing that doing that shit. Too, for me. Like, you know, whoever doing that shit, and then just like. Life-wise, shit, the kids. Kids keep me going. Shit, people who look up to me keep me going. You know, stuff like that. I don't really want to start name job because I'm much trying to get somebody. But, you know. Right. Okay, so, um, where are we at? We in Oakland, California, in the 65 Ville. Can you tell us what we doing? Man, we did this, I think that's our second or third stop. And it's intentional, you know what I'm saying? We got we got a thing because we say the streets are open. I work out 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I feel much to see how I see, you know what I'm saying? This whole thing that like, coming out. You look around, you got life out, you got life after life. You got uh, uh great ass security. Uh, you, you got different organizations. You, you, see, you see brothers like, and sisters like the red and black. You see the you see the people. Hey, let me bite two of my two of my shoes and my clothes up, man. Two of my pants. So forgive me, y'all. You know this is one of my um, stress reliefs, hanging out with these dogs too. Right. But um, out here literally with the people, man. You know, so this ain't stage or nothing, man. You got a double dust going on. I just shouted you out, man. Kano's just served, you know what I'm saying? Brothers get, I mean, some hell of a war stories here, two hell of a testimonies out here, you know what I'm saying? People done, 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 done more than two, two, three decades locked up, you know what I'm saying? He came out. I like to say, uh, if Phil Marshall George I say, they, they, Phil Marshall George I say, in prison, they would never count me amongst the broken men. We are paraphrase, broken men or broken women. So it's, this, this, this is, this is a, um, a, a true testimony to, to our people to come out here and still be connected to the community. Because the purpose of prison, contrary to what they tell you about rehabilitation, is actually to break the wheel and spirit of men, women, and children. You see, the, you see the continuous connection out here, you know what I'm saying, with the people. When we talk about, we say it's different between the war and the revolution. The war is two occupying armies, where you suit up and you boot up and you get out and you get out. The revolution, you gain the mass of the the masses of the people, man. This dynamic with the people are eating, you know what I'm saying, relating with each other, you know what I'm saying. And this is not just no, just no, just no socially and for socially good sake. It's on people, it's on people, it's on access to resources, you name it. So it's, 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 it's phenomenal energy out here today. Right. Shortly, for those that don't know, for the history that gets lost generationally, who was Fred Hampton Sr.? Chevy Fred was a phenomenal. Chevy, Chevy, put it, Chevy Fred was a black panther. That was his, how they say in church, we show calling. That was his calling. You know what I'm saying? The, 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 um, that, it, it, that was, it was made, you know what I'm saying, for him and so many others. You know what I'm saying? The uh, Black Panther Party was a revolutionary organization. Chevy Fred was a revolutionary. He was a phenomenal organizer. He was subsequently, um, uh, it was Chevy Fred who authored the Rainbow Coalition. 
uh, Chairman Fred was subsequently assassinated uh, December 4, 1969, along with Defense Captain Mark Clark on the west side of Chicago. If those want to get more details, they could uh, go to SaveTheHamptonHouse.org and come on Chicago August 30th. Saint what? What's it called? SaveTheHamptonHouse.org. SaveTheHamptonHouse.org. Okay. We got the Hampton House named uh, 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 the house he grew up in, turned to a museum. August 30th, it's going down. Man, we got the caravans coming to Chicago for Chairman Fred's birthday. August 30th, Chicago. Come on, y'all, get on up there. So at Save the Hampton House, the, is the house at risk of being lost or? It was, it was, we finna change the Hampton House. We just saved it. We just saved it. We, just, we got the base of so some museums. So we finna change it to the Hampton House right now. We just, just sit right now. Technically, it's still SaveTheHamptonHouse.org. Okay. Yeah. SaveTheHamptonHouse.org. Yep. All right. Well, yep. thank you so much for your no, time. Thank you. And, uh, oh, yeah. You know what? Last question. What was, let's say, first you and your father, what was your relationship to Oakland? Or should I say, it just the, the Chicago chapter of the Panthers, including the Cubs, and the relationship to Oakland? What are you? Oakland, 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 Oakland. Oakland. I, I, I said recently, I just came back from um, Ghana, Africa, and I said, I. I came up from the motherland, and I was speaking here, I said, this is also is considered our motherland, Oakland, California, you know what I'm saying? This is the birthplace of the Black Panther Party. This is what, you know what I'm saying? Oakland is, as I said earlier, geographically a small location, but it represents a political giant. This is what I took on 15th, Minister U.E.P. and the Chairman Bobby Seale, they kicked it off, you know what I'm saying? So this is the birthplace of it, you know what I'm saying? You can't talk about this, is, when I come here, I, I, I can feel the soil, you know what I'm saying? This is, man, this, this is the birthplace of it, man. This is where it kicked up at, Oakland, California. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Someone say like the mecca yeah, of the yeah, revolution. You better, hey man, you can, I mean, we just had a street sign with Tupac, you know what I'm saying? And, we, you know what I'm saying? and no doubt about it, you, you can't no cast compare him on that microphone, but it did. But it also, again, impact that was ingrained in his DNA from right here to Joseph, being in Oakland, California. You cannot negate that, man. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you, man. Welcome to yeah. Oakland, California. Man, you know, you be out here. I, 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 yeah, 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 man. Hey, 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 I get in. Hey, hey, I don't get a toy person, but my, hey, I get, hey, I don't give my phone number out, yo. But, 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 hey, but, hey, this, hey, this, hey, this, this is my second home, man. Yeah. 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 So, appreciate yeah. you, man. Appreciate you, brother. Yeah. But right yeah, on, let's right get it on. on. Right CRC, on. what we doing? Man, we out here. It's a positive pull up. But this right here, man, this 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 go back what they say like bucket seats and man recliners, man. Real talk. Come on, man. This my this my brother, right? We we what, what you say, man? War. Man, we ain't hey, mad. We ain't. Hey, we, we first touched down, we, we, we got this thing, we look, 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 look at family pictures, like, man, you know, you know we related, man. <laughs> we don't need no more problems, nobody tells no the, the connection of the, the African ancestry to the so lineage, man. But I'm just, I'm telling you, man, I just, I just landed, literally, coming from Chicago, Chicago, but I, I ain't landed. I'm still, I'm charged up, I'm half the people, man. Historical significance where we at here, man. I always want to open the general, man, the, the birthplace of the Black Panther Party, man. I just I appreciate these brothers, these comrades, the family that does so much. I mean, I mean that from the heart, man. I'm talking about, hey, man. Man, this just, I know from the neck, from the neck of the eye, you know, so that's nice, you got there, you know what I'm saying, doing certain things, but put in context, you know, again, the significance of this location where we at, the children, the people, like, as I said earlier, that's the difference between the war and the revolution, man. War, two occupying armies, just two people to boot up and get down the ground. Revolution game, the mass of participation, the mass of the people, man. You can feel the people here, man. Central Committee, my brother, my comrade right here, man. Oh, man, man, man. Hey, man, I'm proud of you, man. We proud of you. We love you, man. Real talk, man. Man, man. Hey, say, hey. Y'all, hey, hey, CRC, hey, man. Listen, this, hey. Trucks into my life after life, life after life, man. Kano, special security. The sisters on the double dust, the brothers, the masses, everything up to us. The ingredients, I can't, you can't figure out everything from the dogs out here. Everything, again, it's, it's a whole atmosphere, it's an aura. You know, this, like, this, this, this is historical, man. Real talk. Man, it's historical. Listen, listen and we're going to keep moving. What it says international. International, man. International. Real talk, right? Real talk. Man, from, from Haiti, Brazil. Man, yes. Chicago. Yes. Oakland, deep. deep man, come man, on. Come on. We're going to keep moving, we're going to keep building. Real talk. All right. For those that don't know about Oakland and Chicago's connection, uh, you want to speak on that real quick? Sister Cities? Come on. You can't, man. You, I mean, you can't tell what, I mean, like, black, the man, you, Black Panther Party, this, this, you know, I know we talk to a generation, I tell people to take for granted social media. I'm talking about pre-social media. I'm talking about, I'm talking about no cell phones. 
that could, the, the, the Oakland, California, Chicago, this was sister cities. The Black Panther Party became an international organization. So I'm talking about the communication they was doing. I'm talking about the programs that had that, that template, you know what I'm saying? To be able to respect different locales, but at the same time, that, that, that core consistency, man. You know what I'm saying? For, 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 ain't no strange, ain't no coincidence, but to no maintain that connection, man. Right. The sister cities, I'm talking about, we, we joke with each other a lot of times. We be talking. You know what I'm saying? Without going into too many detail, we can go through internal struggles today. Okay, what happened with you on that end? Alright, what happened with you on that end? And it be so similar. We had a joke, we say, man, sons of anarchy, man, they got nothing on the fuck we going through, man. You know what I'm saying? And it be like, the, even the attacks, even with the resistance to our man, it, 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 the sister cities, the spirit of sister cities still continues. Still continues. Yep, real so, tough. Appreciate y'all. Right All right, and right we on. out. Man, we over here in the village, looking out for the brothers and sisters, all the little kids over here, passing out TVs, bikes, food. We cleaned up a lot. And just so y'all all know who I am, I'm Oscar Grant, the father of the little kid who got killed at the bar station. So for all you who don't know, now you know. We out here doing a good deed. Sir, tell us about Kano, Life After Life. Oh man, Life After Life, boot on the ground. Well basically we uh, pretty much giving back to the community, helping the youngsters out, help them get jobs, educate them, bring them out here to the programs, help them work a little bit, put a little money in their pocket. But also, have them help clean up the streets, which is a good deed. For sure, for sure. So, uh, Sue, anything, any closing remarks to the people? Yes, sir. For all you people who don't know, y'all should be out here help clean up this neighborhood, clean up these streets. You go get fed, and if your kids got any toys, bikes, you should have brought them out here. You'd have had fun enjoying just what your kids want. Get to pick what they want, a TV, instead of a bike. Right. That's a shocking to me. I never seen this before. Well, they chose a TV instead a of a bike. Kid chose a TV over a bike. <laughs> it's just a shock. <laughs> For sure. Well, thank you, man. Oh yeah. yeah. That would have been my woolly blanket. Oh yeah. He on. He knew what he was doing. Uh, now he riding. Riding around like he got a $500 bike. Oh God. TV? Mama got a TV. That's for his room. <laughs> I was actually like, no, this is going to the living room. <laughs> Told you. Come on. Come on. You got to be a good guy. Alright, 
Project Papa. We wrapping up the uh, positive pull up, man. How you feel about today? Shit, everything came out good. Everything came out good. I feel good about it. You know, everybody pulled up, helped, participated. For sure. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. 10, out of 10. How did it feel to, uh, to see them kids get them bikes? Oh, I feel good. And they got some TVs too. Okay. You know, like kids, we love them bikes. Yeah. So, how did it make you feel to see them, you know, walk away with that? Shit, it made me feel good. Just as family, you know. It made me, uh, it made me feel good. Just as family. You see the reaction on the camera? Like always, you know, I'm used to it. Right. right. You know, you're doing shit, man. Right. But it feels every time, I always feel good every time. No. It's a real good, genuine nigga, man. You know what I'm saying? The only one that I know besides me saying, oh, yeah, we from the same hood and all that. No, this is a real good, genuine nigga, man. Y'all need more niggas like this from y'all hood to want to give fucking back to these young niggas. Understand that. Inspiration is everything. Right, right. What you got? Look at that bike, man. You want to say something? <laughs> I mean, you no, know. Bike. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. So. <laughs> so. Trying to learn how to wheelie now. Wheelie bike. Yeah. Oh yeah, you on now? They got hops to learn how to wheelie. For sure. Sure. That's what's up, man. Well, we appreciate you, man. The, the uh, community is obviously appreciative of what you're doing, man. So you plan on keeping this up? Yeah, no, hell yeah. For sure, we ain't gonna stop. We're gonna keep going. Right. For sure. It's just the, like you said. This is the beginning of something big. It's just the beginning. This is the number of great, great things to come. For sure. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Appreciate you. All right. All right. Taco Tone checking in. We're in the village right now. East Oakland for the community give back. We was in West Oakland yesterday. We're truly honored. You know, shout out to the community court. They got us right. They doing big things in Oakland, man. Like I said, Taco Tone checking in. Where are we at and what did you do today? <laughs> we in the 6-5 field. Of course, I brought these double dutch ropes out here for the positive pull-up day with CRC. Um, so, as you know, I'm Jump Squad 510. Um, we do double dutch for mental physical and social wellness. I brought the ropes out here today to share this with the community here. So we can uh, jump stress, anxiety, heart disease, obesity, and uh, help the kids here in Oakland learn how to jump. Look, we were just talking. I say this make it all worth it, honestly. Any struggles, all this, man. It's so beautiful, man. That's what it's about. <laughs> careful, careful. Uh, I said, sorry. <laughs> yeah, let's make it all worth it, man. All right. I mean, you know, again, folks always talk about what's wrong with our communities, man. This was right, man. This was right. And if you if you live in our communities, you know, man, it's, it's so much love. It's so much beauty. And everything folks be talking, man, that's, that's what hurt the most to hear how folks talk about our communities. It's love, it's beauty, and most of us are, are operating off of survival instinct, man. And if we if we if we don't acknowledge that, then what happens is our people get thrown to the wolves because we're not acknowledging that there's conditions that create that, right? Them reflexes that we have, violent reflexes, violent tendencies, man, that's created by these conditions. And if you don't, if you don't remedy the conditions, then these youth is as beautiful and as sweet as any other youth anywhere. But the conditions force them to have something in them to survive. And you can't you can't have our youth in the jungle and then not expect them to have some jungle tendencies. If not, how is they gonna survive? Right? But inside of that, man, it be love and protection and care. We take care of each other, man. And seeing that, man, that's so so for me. We make all this shit worth it, man. All the struggle. Right, and I remember now that I think about it, uh, I was filming at the Stunner Man one. But it's not a lot of rappers kind of really do this, but for the ones that do, I mean, what is it, how does it make you feel to see like a rapper really care as much as you or be invested in their neighborhood in that way? I, I, I guess I feel two ways about that. I feel like one, we put too much, we invest too much of our followership into entertainment. Somebody said one time, man, that 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 
the rappers and their music shouldn't be the movement, it could be the soundtrack too. And so we have to make a clear distinction between movement leaders and entertainers. We're getting into what we call art as a tool. Using art as a tool of something. Using art as a tool of liberation. Using art as a tool of freedom, of love, of beauty, of community cultivation. That's what it's about, right? So we love when we see entertainers elevate themselves to leaders. Elevate themselves to, to be in a part of movements, right? Because it ain't because you say it's a movement, don't make it a movement. Though. So be clear, it's a difference. In the right? We don't come with no rah rah. We come with love. Period. Point blank. And, and we get love back anywhere we ever been. It's always love. It's never. That's why we can walk in places that other people can't walk. It's always love, brother. You could tell them about your experiences in life for 20 plus years. That it was love. What you say, brother? Stay on the right side of right. It's gonna always be all right. Come on, man. It's gonna be all right. Stay on the right side of right. And that's what we push. We push for that solution. So we push the solution to right. You know what I'm saying? For us as a whole, <coughs> as a community, as individually, you know what I'm saying? Making the right choice, making the right decision. You know what I'm saying? And uh, after doing 25 years straight, you know what I'm saying? Going through the struggle, you know what I'm saying? From the age of 20 until I was 45 straight, you know? Uh, going through what I went through, learning and studying. Discipline, you know what I'm saying? Going to sleep at a certain time, eating at a different time, and being able to read and understand not just in their history, but law, understanding. So it, it, all of this is our passion, our passion, and our passion to get back to our community and show the love and respect. People always make love, but you gotta have respect that comes along with it because it goes hand in hand. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people love, say they love each other, but they don't know how to respect each other and treat each other with that integrity and that kindness. That's a big thing. Big thing. That's what's up, man. You got anything you wanted to say about today, man, about what we doing? Oh, you know, well, you know, like the brother said, in order for us to come together like we're doing, it has to come through a chain of command. You've got to always have that respect. And the brother right, I did 35. And when you say self-discipline, I think I'm the most self-disciplined person I've ever met now. Because I can, t I can pat myself on the back and say, Oscar, you told yourself you're not gonna do it. You didn't do it. You told yourself you're not gonna pick up a gun when you come out of it. You didn't do it. You told yourself you're gonna get a job. Guess what? Kano, special cert. You pass our toys, food, clean up the community, and I also got a book coming out gonna be released along with probably be a documentary right behind it. Yes sir. And I'm gonna also continue keep doing speaking engagements and speaking to the kids to make sure that no kid ever, ever, and when I say ever, have to go through what my family had to go through with my son. Yes, sir. I don't want to see no other family have to go through that. So at the end of the day, it's boots on the ground. Boots on the ground. We all we got. Hey, we got a lot. <laughs> How you feel about the community give back today, man? Good. Yeah. Man, when the uh ooh, that's a nice bike, man. You know the company that came out here? CIC. Yep. What you think about them? Good people uh, they give back to their community, clean up and stuff. Yeah, what about Project Papa? My uncle. That's your uncle? That's both of them. Yeah. Uh, okay. he, he's gonna he try to give back to his family and peoples. And other people he try to feed people. That's what's up. You gonna be like that when you're older? Yeah. Yep, yeah, that's he's good. Like my, he's like model. Big model. A model. Yep. Yeah, that's what's up, man. That's a good role model, man. When you get older, you got it. Came up in the...
Day in the life, what's good with you? Shit, chilling, getting ready for this event. Yeah, yeah. You good? Chilling, kind of ready for this event. Man, so uh, I want to get makeup on your shirt. <laughs> so what's uh, what's good? What's poppin', man? Same old, same old. Another event, another positive pull up. Yeah, he's soaking with it in the hood. Reveal. What was the uh? How was the reaction to the first one? I seen a lot of people was sharing and stuff. Yeah, good. Everybody was uh, everybody was rocking with it. So. Like they do everything else. Yeah, ain't yeah. really nothing, nothing negative they can say about it. You know? Right. What you, uh, how you feel it kind of changes the, do you feel like the positive pull up kind of changes the atmosphere a little bit? Yeah, for sure. Especially like during the event, because you know, it's just positive vibes. Ain't nobody on no bullshit. Feel me? Shouldn't nobody be coming around here with no bullshit when we doing that. Even people from over here, if you feeling some type of way about something, you just don't need to come around when that kind of stuff going on. Right. Especially while these kids out here. Yeah. So it changed it up, you know? It changed stuff. Hell yeah. So the uh man, how the kids been reacting? Now they 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 like when we be doing this kind of stuff. But we we fuck with the kids. I got a my man, I got a cousin for I don't like yeah, it's all good. We uh we rock with the kids regardless of the fact even if we do an event or not doing an event, that's why, you know. They they like it for sure. It might not be too many kids here today. A lot of kids got after school programs. The right. you know, majority of the stuff that we be doing around here be like weekends, like Saturday, Sunday. You feel me? Right. A lot of kids don't get out till today until like 5, 30 probably. Damn, yeah. I feel you. Yeah. And then we kind of found out a little late, so we didn't really get to tell them because, you know, a lot of probably kids would have, you know, skipped out on the after school program for a day. Right. Uh, so you guys like agreed to this last minute? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, for yeah. sure. And even though it was last minute, you know, we wasn't going to be like, nah, because it's like whatever kids available, we're going to make sure... We're going to make sure they get what they get. For sure, for sure. sure. All right, well, uh, in closing, man, what's your message to the youth, man? You got to be yourself. Don't be, don't don't try to be like the next person. You got to be you. If you see somebody else doing something, it might not work for you. If you see somebody acting another kind of way, it might not work for you either. Just be yourself at the end of the day. Stay true to yourself, you know? Sure. That way, man. That way, what? If anything go wrong, you can't blame nobody else. You got to blame yourself. <laughs> <laughs> For real. Take responsibility. Yo, Hell take yeah. Responsibility. Appreciate yes, you, man. Sir. If Ooh. you need another one ever, just let me know. Yep, it's all good. Oh. You know, Mike, get us a uh, drink down. Oh, we at uh, 65th Village. Oh, okay. Getting ready to pass out TVs, bicycles, earbuds, water, and food. Most definitely food, because I'm sure go eat. You can best believe that. So, so. And I want the world to know, yes, this is Oscar Grant. So, so, so where we at right now? We right here at 65th. Yeah. In the back part of the village. Oh, yeah. Getting ready to pass a lot of things out, like I said. What kind of food is we getting right, we in front links, of right here? We got links, dirty rice, nachos if you want. But guess what? At the end of the day, everybody come on down, get your son to eat. It's all good. It's free. Uh, the kids come down and get you a bike or TV on the skateboard. On the ribs. And the rap. Straight up. Ooh. Oh, oh Kenny gonna uh wrap his link. Positive pull up. Another positive pull up in the bag, man. Right before the summer, we're trying to hit the folks out here, get the young folks. Man, we in 6-5 Village. Beautiful. It's a beautiful day. Beautiful uh, turnout. The kids were uh, enjoying everything. Some free food, oh, some yeah. free giveaways, some good music. You know, we all we got. We love it. Out here with Alico doing oh, yeah. his thing. So we appreciate you coming out documenting history. Show. Making history and taping history is what they say. That's what Brother Jeremy say. Jeremy Fred Hampton Jr. say. Yep. And taking it. Let's go. Like I say, the revolution will be televised. It will be televised. It will be. Yes, sir. Show. CRC. Yeah. Hey. Hey. What's good? Where we at, man? We out here in the field. You feel me? For real, for real. You feel me on that sober shit? You feel me? 
positive, full love, you feel me? David in the house, you feel me? It, it's, it's beautiful to you feel me, see everybody out here, you feel me, enjoying themselves and not looking over their shoulders, you feel me? King Cali. What's the IG, man? King Cali. Uh, choose Money King Cali. K I N G K A L I. Choose Money, baby. Yeah. Show. Bye. Fuel Way, um, tell us where we're at and what we are doing. Right, we're over here on 35th and Wood Street with Anti-Police Terror Project, Community Ready Corps, Punks with Lunch, and our friends from the Wood Street Commons, who in just a few weeks will be experiencing that one year anniversary of being evicted from 2601 Wood Street, where they had built a common community after being sent there for years by the city of Oakland, who had no affordable housing options for them had no other resources and said all right well you all can build encampment in this space and folks actually built community in that space um, and were forcefully removed from that area almost a year ago today so for the last month we've been partnering with our housing comrades um, across Oakland particularly deepening our roots here in West Oakland which is why we're on Wood Street all along this lane from 26th 20th Street um, further down to about 40th you can see that there are communities um, who are building housing space for themselves but also have been neglected by the city right this is not a sweep today this is actually a community building opportunity to say community comrades what do you need we have Narcan out here we have needle exchange equipment out here we brought some food and drinks because we're partnering with folks to say all right what does not serve you in this space what does serve you in this space and that is actually how the city should be taking that approach right okay um all right we have technical difficulties you said we got to make sure people are surviving yeah, we make sure people are surviving means actually knowing who lives out here, right? That's how you're able to say, oh, what happened to so-and-so? Because I remember they were on that block. Oh, actually, because of them per uh, actually having an overdose right across the street from Kaiser Hospital, we refused Narcan at the time. That person actually died. They're no longer with us today. So there's a lot of word of mouth community communication that's happening here uh, with folks just keeping track of each other and learning about people's whereabouts. Oh, that person got put up in this place for a little bit. It may have worked out. This person got put up and actually it was really devastating to their mental health. Um, those are some of the interpersonal stories that folks at Wish Street Commons in particular that do outreach on a regular basis and we're happy to be partnering with them now and doing so moving forward. Um, but that's the information that the community holds. Right, right. Well, I appreciate you. So what, um, what's something you want the people to know? One last thing, broadcast to the world. What you thinking? Come out June 2nd, we're having a block party. We want to be able to show you the love and the light that is humanity um, and community coming together with housing solutions, all right? It's not just demands to the city, but actually demanding that the city listen to what the solutions are. So if you want to listen to the, some of those housing solutions, if you want to break bread with community, come out June 2nd, 2601 Wood Street. June 2nd, for sure. Appreciate you. And what's your name and social? My name is Refeel Way. I'm with Anti-Police Terror Project. That's at Anti-Police Terror Project. Thank you. We're partnering, right? And and again, what, what CRC does is we help a lot of organizations get on their feet, right? Because we've been around a long time. We know it can't just be us, right? And so what we help to do is nurture and, and incubate different organizations. So that's a, a large part of our relationship. But these brothers today, being out here right now, without Kano, this wouldn't be as, as, as smooth as it is because of the relationships that they have in these in these encampments right now, right? And so because of that, it makes this work possible, right? The reason why we want to speak to that is because so many of our folks, man, we, we, we had some situations recently. And folks talk down on our brothers and sisters that's coming home. But we know and we value that work. And so with al Kano. This would have been a lot more, this, this, just like just like we did in Fitzgerald Park. These brothers and sisters are out here helping us to bridge the gap between these relationships to make this smooth. Right. So, yeah. Okay, that's what's up. Uh, oh, yeah, so the last question was CRC for the rest of the year, 2024. What's, uh, what's going on? On these streets. On these streets, doing as much of this as possible. You know, our thing is a lot of people got a lot to say. Our whole thing is resist the doom loop. They want to tell you to talk down on your city. That's cast like John Protopapis, who are funding people like Seneca Scott, to come in and get you to tear down your city so that the prices go down. And I'm telling you what I know. I'm telling you what I know. 
that these developers and real estate folks are, are the folks that are behind this recall and shit like that. We're not even saying good, bad, or otherwise. You got to know a hustle when you see a hustle. You ain't even had an administration that's been here long enough to tell you whether they good, bad, or otherwise. Right? From the day they won, they've been talking about recounts and recalls. That's a hustle. That's a hustle backed by developers. Right? John Protopopis, who was down with Jerry Brown, Libby Shaft, the displacement machine. Jerry Brown said, it's either summification or gentrification. Jerry Brown initiated the process. He said that, I'm, I, he said that his mission was to break the back of the black political establishment in Oakland. So then what happened is they started to push you out. Push us out of the city, right? So long-time Oakland residents for generations. Oakland used to be a significant to majority black city. Now you're down to 20 to 19% somewhere in that ballpark, right? It's dwindling. This machine, now they're on the final stages. They want to get you down to San Francisco like 3%. I'm sure San Francisco is down lower than that now, right? There was It was 3% 10 years ago. So I'm sure it's lower than that now. They want black Oakland to be 3% or less, right? They're trying to get you out of here. So I'm saying that to say, don't buy into the doom loop. And so what we're doing is we're on the streets doing the work to counter that. Period, point blank. We want to show what we call the positive pull-up. Yeah. That when we talk, the folks is talking shit, yeah, problems exist. But what are we doing to contribute and band together? Because the counter to the doom loop strategy and narrative is a positive pull together. Because then you, you keep your city valuable by showing the world that you can pull together, that you're going to do something about it, and that it's a strong community. So that's what we're doing for the rest of the year. Right, right. And you know, you touched on a, a thing that I wanted to connect with the 10K program. Yeah. So can you, uh, yeah, yeah. a lot of people don't know what the 10K program was. Yeah. And I think you kind of alluded to it, but we might have skipped over it. Jerry Brown wanted to bring 10,000 new people into the city. Right. They they they, they want brown low income, not even affordable. They wanted market rate housing, market rate housing in a high property situation like San Francisco and Oakland at this point. Market rate means that is it's more than you can afford, basically. Right. And so they wanted to be, uh, bring 10,000 new people into the city. And that's and but that meant pushing us out of the city. And that's where we are right now. Right. Okay, cool. So any final words to the people? Man, we all we got, right? But we say, shit, we got a lot. That's just what it is. So we say we band together, we pull together, and any problem that exists in our community, we can solve it ourselves. We can solve it by pulling together. Don't let folks talk y'all into tearing down and talking down your city because that plays in somebody else's interest. That plays in pushing the property values down. When we talk, we talk each other out of the city. We talk each other from moving. If the property values go down, they come in and buy it up for cheap. That is the game plan. That's confirmed. Again, study John Protopopis. Study Sam Singer. Sam Singer has been contracted under the Shaft administration. He's, he's the representative for Laron Armstrong right now. Sam Singer is the bad guy's good guy. He's a spin doctor who makes bad people look good. Now, I'm not saying, I don't know, I don't know why Laron got him on or whatever, but I'm saying whenever you see Sam Singer, you know some shit is going down. Right. So what is something that, that you could uh, trace him back to as far as that? Yeah, Chevron. Chevron, he's represented Chevron. It was in, uh, I, I want to say Ecuador, but do your research because I'm, I'm not saying, but there was indigenous populations that were being fucked over by oil companies. He went in and represented the oil companies and made their, their genocidal moves look like they were good moves. I've heard and told, been told, and so I say allegedly, that he represented a rapist at an Oakland high school a teacher who was a rapist at an Oakland high school, allegedly, because I got I don't have the documentation, but this is what we were told by one of their family members, right? But he's the bad guy's good guy. So do your own research on Sam Singer. He's a spin doctor who, when, when big companies and scoundrels fuck up, he goes in the press and makes them look like good people. So is he a lawyer or just a he's a, he's a 
He's a PR person. He owns a PR company. And that's what he does. He's a he has a PR firm. Sam Singer has a PR firm for Monster Housing was was going down. Bridgewood, a company that buys up and flips houses, right? And I'm not talking about mom and pop. I'm talking about a corporation that comes in and buys houses, holds them, all of that, speculators, right? When they were trying to kick the moms out, they hired Sam Singer. Sam Singer came in and painted a picture of them as welfare moms, as deadbeats. That's who Sam Singer is. So does he do this by getting his articles kind of on the news? Yes. Or? As a matter of fact, you got to watch. We got to ask the question. Sam Singer has a relationship with most of these media outlets. Not only do they pay for that, they go to the news outlets. That whether they get them advertising or whatever, because he's a high power firm, they are more likely to cater to him. That's who's behind this recall. Go to his page. Go to Sam Singer's Twitter. He'll tell you he's about taking this government, this this particular progressive government down. That's what he says. Right? So you got rich white men who live in Piedmont, Claremont, and different places that's gonna dictate Oakland politics. And that's what we're talking about right now. Every one of these motherfuckers that's behind the recall, either rich motherfuckers from San Francisco, Piedmont, Claremont, and they want to dictate Oakland politics. Right, right, right. And that's what's happening. Okay, well, last question. Yes, sir. Because I think a lot of people aren't uh, savvy to the, to the council stuff. What role, who is Carol Fife? Carol Fife is the West Oakland D3 representative, and she was the the, the spearhead for Moms for Housing, no matter what anybody tells y'all. Don't believe the bullshit. Carol Fife was the one who organized and brought the moms together because there were several little moms who were going through things, right? And so she got them together and they and they took over a house, right? But right now she's the representative. She's trying to do something called the 5K plan. 5K plan is to get 5,000 houseless folks off the streets into housing with wraparound services. And so that's what she's fighting for right now because our people should not be on the streets, right? They need to be in it with, with all the care that they need. Period. All right. Well, thank you very much. Right on. DRC. Thank you. And what Instagram should we follow, man? You go, go to Community Ready Core, C O R P. Community Ready Core on Instagram. Right on. We love y'all. We all we got. Right. Hello, everybody. I want y'all to understand something and pay attention. We out here in Acorns, Chestnut. Cleaning up, passing out food, giving out TVs, giving out bikes. We also is asking a lot of you youngsters who don't want to be in trouble or get in trouble. Hey, everybody know who I am. I'm Oscar Grant, the father of the kid that got killed at that bar station. You want a, jo a job working with us, get in contact with me. I help you. Trust and believe. Boots on the ground all the time. We gonna stay strong, no matter what. They may have think they made it, but you can't break it. And unless we come together, it won't be nobody. People don't understand something. These streets are tore up. They dirty. They filthy. People don't respect people. So in order to get all this back, this is why we out here in the community now, helping, clean up, talk to people, see what they need. Even if you have mental health problems, guess what? I work with POCC Mental Health, so can help you there, along with Kano Special Program, along with CRC Cleanup Crew, along with all the brothers that's on the crew with us. We all want boots on the ground. Come out and see us. Help clean up, clean, clean up your community and help talk to these youngsters. And I ain't just talking about the OGs, I'm talking about the youngsters. Youngsters, y'all can talk to each other and let people know that, hey, man, we really want to work, we really want to do this, we really want to do that, but in order to get it done, you have to come talk to us and let us know. Or we'll never know what's on y'all mind. I'm not saying don't run the streets, don't do what you're doing. Just pay attention to what you're doing because the consequences is deep. That's what y'all don't know. With that note, I'm Oscar Grant Jr. Y'all have a blessed day and hope that everybody come out and participate in the next program. We'll be in East Oakland.
cleaning up. Come out. So appreciate you. Woo! So, bro. We home. Right here. This Miko right here, that's Miko. And then the black one, that's the jar. Uh, they just some stray cats. <laughs> Basically stray cats. One of them, um, the black one, the jar, she she was a little baby. She used to be sitting in front of the house. And then um, like when she was little, just trying to, you know, find some shelter and just be running off, you know, they they stray cats, but they just felt safe up over here eventually, you know. I just remembered her and I just started feeding her every now and then and then she had some babies and then she had them in the backyard, so from there, that was kind of like, she just felt safe, you know, and then I just got connected with our kids. So I've been posting some videos about them online, you know, you've been kind of seeing that, like, uh, Sahara's tail got uh, cut off for some reason, so he just got his tail amputated, so that was wild. And, uh, you know, just, that's when, you know, I'm Dr. Do a lot, so, you know, I love the animals out here, so. Right. Uh, Right. Oh, and this, and this, even in this lot, Boosie, little Boosie shot a video over here, bro. You go, you look, go, For go real? look at the video, of little Boosie, bro, in Acorn, in West Oakland. You can see, uh, you feel me, right here in this lot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So like that. Um, shit, bro. I mean, Acorn just like I don't know what it is about Acorn though. Like, I, I really, I, 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 it just, it just people just gravitate to Acorn, the vibe, the bop. I think maybe because we got a project. You feel me? I don't know what it is, bro. But I know that. I mean, I'm, it's, it's really that hard, though. People really got, it's like loving, you know? We might have a lot of kind of, we do got a like, nice family vibe with each other, but sometimes it'd be like uh, self-hatred and self-destructive sometimes, especially when new people move in. But when we go outside, you feel me, that essence and the energy that we learn from just learning how to grow up tough and still kind of have heart, you feel me? Uh, I think that, that, that people appreciate that, bruh. Cause they like, oh, you from Acorn? You like that though? I think everybody kind of got that from Acorn. You feel me? Really, if you keep it lit, maybe you're in front of town. When you, when you slide out somewhere else, we be, we be cool. You be like, that brother's cool. It's hard like that out there. You gotta go through all that. But you be like, that cool though. But it's kind of like, maybe that's self-hatred. You know how it be. Right. Damn. What have you, I've, I noticed you've been doing some work with CRC. What have you noticed from them? This year that they've been. Let's walk down this way and keep it like. Oh know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause they we walked off, but they doing uh. Yeah, what what work have you done with them basically? So we um I did a turkey drive with them. I mean oh no okay so the first way I got introduced to them was they did a uh, a talent show. So Naru is an OG in the community that invited me out to the talent show that you was, mm -hmm. that you was part of that you won. Um, uh, and then I, I won the, uh, the free video. So I did a video. I shot um, another day, another day in the Yadada. I scored it and in location and all that, and, and, and that was cool. Then uh, what can I say? Uh, that was the first introduction, and then uh, then I came back and I did the hosting. I, I was the judge at the next one, and then. Uh, what else can I say? Then from there, we did a turkey drive. We did a turkey. We gave away turkeys for, um, at Thanksgiving over there at Lowell Park. And then, then we just did another positive pull-up over there at uh, Lafayette. I don't know what it's called now. I forgot Marshall or something like that, but I know that's Lafayette the, um, school, so. All right. Yeah, so that's kind of been it. And then um, I just did a song with Denmark, too, though. So I'm kind of kind of smooth one, too, though. So, All right. Um, I think they just, they ultimately, like, after I won the thing and they followed up with me, they just see how I'm moving in the community and they just be wanting to support me to show that I got some back in. And so they just, like, be like, bro, pull up, man. We gonna, we gonna take care of the community anywhere you want to go, bro. We'll pull up, you know, and even, even Brother Torak, uh, you know, building a kind of relationship with him, too, though. And that's what it's about, bro, just to build, man. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We had the real, the real shit. Y'all might be on camera. Yeah. Yep. Hey, doing, brother? Yeah, bro. 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 Yeah, bro.
Chilling. What's up with y'all, man? Now we filming. I'll take a picture though. What's the filming about? Talk to me so I can pop my shit, man. Really, uh, so look, CRC, they doing the thing thing up in there. It's a uh, positive pull yeah, toy drive. Positive. Oh, yeah, pull oh, yeah, oh yeah, it's my thing today. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh y'all boys. Oh yeah, yeah, man. Y'all know we in these projects, man. Toy drive for the kids, man. You know the future is already matters, man. I love. Gotta keep the game living, man. I ain't tricked, you know but I love the kids, man. Yeah, man. Three hundred five one zero. Yeah, man. Keep positive for the people. Hey man, y'all still talking. That's what it's about, man. Peace, Peace love, love and unity, I chill. Look at that. Yeah. 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 What's up? Yeah. What's up? 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 What's up?